Space wrecked 14 billion light years from Earth. 14 billion, really? It's a dungeon crawler, but in space. Well, spaceships. He plays a spacefarer who's stranded and has to go into cryogenic sleep and wait for someone to rescue them. Eventually, a fleet of biological survey ships arrive, but they're not going to do much rescuing. There was some wibbly wobbly space anomaly or something that screwed up their systems. Unfortunately, they were carrying all sorts of dangerous alien life forms, which have got loose. And the crew has become violently insane because they got brain damage from the cryo chambers malfunctioning. Great. Naturally, the ships have fallen into disrepair with all this madness going on. So you have to get on board, try to repair the systems, and then get back to civilization. This isn't easy because of the rampaging aliens and crew, but it's that or get back into the freezer, so let's do it. You fly your small ship into the hangar and start exploring. Immediately, we find a keycard and a gun. Oh, and a book which is titled How to Complete the Game, but it's written in an alien language. Okay, so why is the title in English? Oh, it's a joke. Ha. Uh... Then we enter hydroponics. The environments in this game are really nicely detailed. Quite often with these retro dungeon crawlers, you'll have a lot of empty rooms that serve no purpose, but here every room has stuff in it. I guess a spaceship is easier to populate with useful looking clutter than some abstract fantasy dungeon. You'll also find a ton of interesting items lying around, many of which have dubious purpose. The terminal room allows you to access the ship's computer and see the status of all the systems on the ship. Look at those lines wibbling about. This seems like a lot, but the main systems in yellow are the ones we need to focus on. The others are subsystems. We'll need to explore the ship to find the systems themselves. The terminal also lets us access a map of the ship, but weirdly it only shows the area you've currently explored. Why would the computer only know about the parts of the ship you know about? That's a really weird glitch. You can only check this map when you're accessing a terminal, but I'm grateful to have a map of any kind. I get so lost in these kind of games. I don't like mazes, but if I have a map, then I get less lost. To get through the colored doors, you need a key card. The key cards in this game are weird. You know how keys work, right? A key unlocks a particular lock and you can use it over and over again. So naturally in this game, a key works on any door and it gets used up. What kind of security system is that? Do they want the crew to only be able to go into secure areas once, but any secure area they like? Oh, hey, look, another gun and a robot. These things are great. You can plug in different cartridges to give them different abilities, like communication and medical. You can tell them to follow you, or you can program in a series of commands that they will then go off and do. As in, you write an actual program. For now, let's just have it follow us. What happens if I press the medical button now? Ooh, I feel good. Looks like the power room is missing an energy flux decoupler. Oh yeah, one of those. I find it not too far from here, in a crew cabin, and replace the unit. Well, that was easy. The visual of the heartbeat and the ECG meter creates a bit of subtle tension throughout the game, especially when you get into combat. Speaking of combat, look, there's a monster, I mean alien. You shoot at enemies with this jittery cursor. This is meant to simulate the difficulty of properly aiming when your adrenaline is high, but in practice, it's just annoying. You have some influence over the cursor, but the jitteriness is so extreme that, oh God, it took a chunk out of my face. The heart beats faster, kill the bastard. It's hard to tell if you're even hitting it, but the text area does let you know when you've landed a hit. Finally. Heal me, robot buddy. Okay, that's good. It's restored some of my neck. I get an updated look at the map, but it's annoying that you can only look at it in a terminal room. As a kid, I sketched out the layouts on graph paper, but these days I ain't got the patience for that. Screenshot. I found a bunch of items now including a flashlight, a communicator, a lifeform scanner, Geiger counter, and several more robot cartridges, including an attack cartridge, so I can give my robot buddy a gun. I hope its aim is better than mine. Oh, what's this? Flamethrower. Yes. This is a pretty good weapon, because the reticle is large enough that it's harder to miss. It does have a long reload time, though. The terminal room also contains a database on all the alien specimens and crew members on board. This is a weird gameplay choice. It spoils the surprise of seeing these things come at you in the corridors. Imagine just walking along and seeing this, or this, or this. They do have some nice flavor text though. Okay, let's talk about the title of the game. Space Wrecked, 14 billion light years from Earth. 
that is beyond insane. The Andromeda Galaxy is about 2.5 million light years away. The kind of technology and energy requirements of space travel are hard to imagine just to get to the nearby stars, let alone the nearby galaxies, let alone the very far distant galaxies. And we're still using projectile weapons and floppy disks? Obviously, the designers didn't really think about this. They even make the classic blunder of mistaking a light year for a unit of time in the manual. I know, to a lot of people, this is a pointless nitpick, but I can't help it. It's like, what if you were told that the big mountain in Skyrim is a thousand miles tall? It's absurd. So the ship runs on orange juice. You need to fill up these milk bottles and replenish the systems with the vital fluid. Actually, it's coolant. You repair the systems by pouring lots and lots of coolant into them. It seems to be a dice roll whether it works or not, and the only feedback you get is either that it didn't work, or you repaired part of the system. So this means a lot of going back and forth between laboratories to fill up the receptacles and slather the affected systems with the precious orangey goodness. As I explore the ship, more creatures and crew are being let out as the stasis chambers and cryo chambers lose power. The wobbly lines are getting shorter and wobblier. I find another robot. This one is a fix-it droid, which should help with the repairs. Unfortunately, I'm having trouble keeping up with how fast the systems are failing and dealing with all the enemies. One of them takes half my face off. I find another two robots, a rat droid and a compu droid, and that lets me access the terminal from anywhere. That's really helpful, except that it isn't because it doesn't work now because the ship's computer is failing. But now I have a gang of robots to do my bidding and fight my enemies. I managed to map out most of the lower deck before the terminal stopped working, but I get hopelessly lost on the other decks. So let's start over. I proceed a little bit more systematically this time, thanks to the map screenshot I made, with annotations. I grab the scanner droid and head off to manufacture a bunch of milk bottles. Let's fix bio control first, since that will prevent as many enemies from emerging. And look, it actually made a difference. The recharge room is really handy for keeping the robots going and rearming the blasters. You can even recharge the key cards. What? All right, I better get on with repairing life support now. Okay, that's done, mostly. But look at the wibbly line for the computer system. That's not good. The main computer is accessed on the bridge, but I'm still not sure what that is. I get back to mapping and move on to the other floors, collecting droids as I go. Ah, the compu droid. And this time I can actually use the terminal feature. So I can keep track of the map as I explore and holy shit, there's a T-Rex. Stun and run! Aha! I found the bridge. Applied the magic OJ and now the computer is running smoothly. Warning, do not attempt to fix your computer by pouring orange juice into it because it will not work and it will get sticky. But now life support is starting to fail again. These bloody rampaging idiots keep breaking shit faster than I can fix it. This is tech support. We're playing a bloody tech support game. At least you can kill the idiots who break the computers. But there are always more idiots. The race against time to keep these systems operational and deal with the enemies that keep emerging does add up to some pretty tense gameplay. There's always a sense of urgency in trying to get the next thing done. Oh, look at this charming fellow. Battle droid. Roger, roger. Let's have a go at programming one of the droids. You need to make a note of the ID numbers of each room that you want them to go to and of the items you want them to use. I was hoping I'd be able to program it to effect repairs, but it seems the most it can do is manufacture and fill the receptacles. That'll still help though. Look at him go! While the robot is doing that, I'm heading back to life support to do some more repairs. The layout of this ship is bizarre. The only way to get to the back of the ship is through this tiny room. A crew cabin. I feel sorry for the poor bastard who was assigned there. You probably had to piss off the captain pretty badly to have your sleeping quarters used as a public right of way. Once life support is repaired, onto bio control, then comms. It does get kind of tedious when most of what you're doing is watching orange liquid move from one container to another. It would have been nice if there was more to do in repairing the systems. Alright, all the systems seem good now except the bridge. Looks like our trusty robot has made the delivery. One more repair job and... Yes! We did it! Wait. What do you mean see you on the next level? We repaired the ship, didn't we? Why would we go on to another? Let's check the manual. The ships were equipped with the antiquated interlock navigation system, which runs the entire fleet as a single unit from the flagship. You'll need to board each of the ships in turn, repair all of their systems, and then activate the fleet from the flagship bridge. What kind of stupid design is... What if one of the ships is lost or destroyed? The whole fleet gets stranded forever? Who designed these ships? 
Oh, an asteroid hit one of the ships while we were en route. I guess we'll all die then. No wonder these idiots flew their ships into a space anomaly. I know, it's a way to justify having more than one ship to repair, but they could have done something more sensible. What if you need to salvage components from several ships to make one of them functional? How many ships are there anyway? 20? They want you to do this 19 more times? That's insane. Five would have been plenty. Well, let's have a go at the next one and see what's different, I guess. Resources are more scarce. Enemies are tougher. The layout of the ship is completely different. I don't see many robots, but I do find a battle droid. The T-Rex nearly kills me. And oh no, it's a businessman! He's got a stick! Good thing I've got a laser sword and a droid, buddy. I really want to find a compu droid though. They're so useful. Oh crap, it's the ravenous bug bladder beast of trial or something! Well, that was level two. I'm not playing through all 20 of these. I don't think I could make it even if I wanted to, but I found the level codes, so let's try the final level and see what that's like. Well, this isn't a good sign. Stepping out into the corridor and the first thing we see is this. At least I found a weapon. Wouldn't want to face a T-Rex without this. Oh good, there's a ladder. And down here there's a terminal room and... Oh dear. Biocontrol is barely working and as a result there are enemies around every corner. I do find an electro stunner, which lets me get past them temporarily, but I'm constantly on the run. I get stun locked by this bird thing and have to use one of these injectors to heal myself. The lights are off in several of these rooms, and in one there's something preventing me from seeing even with the flashlight. What was that? Get out. Get out! At this point I'm just trying to stay alive long enough to map out the area. I have so little ability to deal with the enemies and they block your movement when you're engaged with them. The stunner is the only reason I can move about at all. I have to find a recharge room to charge up this depleted keycard to open any of the numerous locked doors. I do find another one, and a couple of weapons. An auto pistol, a laser sword, but... Wait a minute, why is my heart yellow? You feel very, very ill. Did one of the creatures poison me? Or maybe it's because I injected myself with some random stuff I found on the floor. Hey, a robot! But I can't seem to interact with it. What the hell? Maybe it ran out of power, or it's broken. What a tease! Ah, but here's a rat droid. And a repair droid. And I found a medical cartridge so I can use them to heal me. I run out of ammo for my stunner while fighting a T-Rex and barely manage to kill it before I lose the last bit of skin off my face. I run off to find somewhere I can heal safely and I run into another T-Rex. And I die. This time I'm going to try to take out the enemies with the meagre weapons at my disposal. The knife takes a while, but it does the job of pruning this botanical bastard. And the laser sword makes swift work of the crew. The problem is, this takes so much longer than the stun and run, that soon the ship's systems are failing and I have barely started to gather supplies, let alone mapping the layout or playing with orange juice. I managed to get a partial map of the main deck, but soon the recharge rooms fail, which makes it impossible to replenish the keycards and the stunner. Then the terminals fail, so I can't even continue mapping. The enemies wear me down until I'm cornered and dead. All right, the only way I'm gonna be able to do this is with a proper map. There's no way to explore the whole ship in a single run though. So I'm gonna to have to piece a map together from screenshots from multiple attempts. I also start to make notes on where useful items are, such as this second stunner. There's a bloody bear in the laboratory. You'd think these things would kill each other, but it seems only one enemy can appear at a... What was that? I don't like that. It says there's an enemy blocking me. Is it invisible? Oh god, it's a leprechaun. How am I supposed to fight this thing? You fumbled the weapon. What? Okay, laser sword. I have to wait for the brief moment when it appears to even have a chance of hitting him. As if the combat wasn't difficult enough. <sighs> this game doesn't play fair. Well then, neither will I. A lot of old games tied the speed of the game to the frame rate. So, if I can reduce the frame rate, I can slow down the game. Bullet time! This makes the combat much more manageable. I'll take any edge I can get, but it's still going to be tough. Piece by piece, I map out the ship, noting down everything that might be useful. Once I have the whole place mapped out, I can put together a plan to get what I need to survive and navigate and do the repairs in the most efficient way possible. Ooh, a proton blaster. Yes. Let's try it out. What? It blew a hole in the deck. And I can't get past it. 
Mm. I'm trapped in this room. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. I'm not even going to try to kill the enemies. There's always more anyway. So, stun and run it is. Okay, I finally have a complete map of the ship. I've even made note of the security door colours since keys are hard to come by. Now, all we need is a little orange juice and a lot of luck. So, here's the plan. Come out of the hangar, get the injector from here, then head down the ladder. Grab this stunner and keys from these rooms. Head on down the corridor, stunning and running as we go. Get the second stunner, but it immediately breaks. Alright, never mind, we have two. Head down the corridor and pick up this laser sword. Then over to the recharge room to replenish the keys and the stunner. Through here to get the medical cartridge and plug it into this rat droid. And now it's milk bottle time in the manufacturer room. I head down to this recharge room, but it's got a creature in it. I try stunning it, but I fumble the weapon. So I decide to switch to the laser sword and try to take it out. But then the laser sword breaks. And now I'm trapped and none of my weapons work. Good thing I've been safe scumming. Alright, let's reload. Recharge the stuff. Go down the ladder to the lower level. I'm going to pick up this repair cartridge so I can get my rat droid to repair my broken weapons. Let's grab this blaster too. Can't have too many weapons, given how easily they break. Even when I'm using time dilation magic and a detailed map of the level, this game is still a complete bastard. I fill up on precious orange juice and head towards the lift, picking up another key on the way. Up to the top level now, to pick up the repair droid from the communications room. Might as well try to fix it while we're here. Oh crap, I need a repair kit. Alright, let's go back down. Let's go and sort out biocontrol. Alright, I'm actually making progress repairing the ship. I can do this. Heading over to the bridge and... Well, well, well. If it ain't the invisible c Repaired the bridge now, and I found the energy flux coupler. Oh shit, the radiation filters have failed. That must be why my heart has changed colour and I'm feeling dizzy. Radiation! I better head over to life support and repair it before I'm fried. Alright, life support is back online, and just in time. That does not look healthy. Next up for repairs is comms. Now over to the power room. Flux coupler. Fluxing. Looks like we need to repair biocontrol again. I'm not sure why it matters, I'm pretty sure everyone has been let out already. Alright, just one more additional repair in the bridge systems and it's done! Congratulations, you've done a great job. The Federation commends you. I wonder about that. Returning to Earth with 20 ships full of dead bodies would look rather suspicious. Honest Gov, they all went crazy and tried to kill me. I had to murder them all! Anyway, that's Space Wrecked. Deeply flawed, but a really compelling premise. This desperate race for survival on these crumbling ships full of deranged crew and monstrous aliens, with the lights going out, the systems failing, going up against all this with only what you could scavenge and with the robot buddies you find along the way. It could have been brilliant, but a few fatal flaws drag it down. The jittery aiming is the worst. It's like trying to thread a needle on a roller coaster. This is a prime candidate for a remake or a spiritual successor. A proper combat system, some more depth to the repairs, add some polish, maybe it could work as a roguelike with procedurally generated ships. Okay, that's the episode. Thanks for watching. And thanks to my patrons for supporting me making these videos. If you'd like to join them and see these episodes a week early, check the link to my Patreon page in the description. See you next time.